What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Level 2 podcast, episode 11. That is 11. two ones. That's 11, back like the back. little girl that eats Or seven Eggos. elevens. Lego my ego? Did you, did you watch Stranger Things? No, I didn't. I can't. It's scary. Remember? It's not that uh, scary. But my name's Keegan. I am one half of Level 2 Gamers. We're hanging out with Tom, uh, the other half of Level 2 Gamers today. Uh, first things first, we got I feel like we got to do this because I, I will forget otherwise. Sure. This level, this level two podcast, I'm going to screw up that sentence, is brought to you by one of our awesome Patreon supporters. We call him Wheezy. His name's Eric. Uh, but E-Weezy. 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 E-Weezy uh, supports us on Patreon at patreon.com slash level two gamers STL. He is uh, one of, he is literally the, the sponsor of this video. So thank yep. you. He's also a really good friend of ours. Um, he's a good friend of ours. He, he made also, our intro. He did make our, our current intro and he's going to, he's actually working on a longer, more exciting version of the intro, uh, which we're going to be hopefully sort of showing you guys at some point yes. in the near future. He uh, he also plays video games. He gets mad when I don't play video games with him, but I get mad when he, he plays He gets games. scary mad for a, for Dude, a relatively yeah. level-headed he, guy. I was going to say relatively short guy because he, well, he is a Well, I'm small short dude. and I also get angry. It's Napoleon <laughs> Complex is what they call it. It's the, uh, the Hulk coming out. Yeah, something like that. So, uh, as we normally do, as we start every podcast, Tom, mm. what have you been up to this past week? You've been you've been a little under the weather. I've been a little <laughs> under the weather. Yeah, what you may notice doing? my voice is a little gone. Uh, if you watch the review By that the way, went I'm, up, I'm eating uh, beef jerky. I'm sorry, it smells real bad. It's okay. I'm the only one that has to suffer. But, <laughs> That's um, true. They can't smell it. If uh, uh, so, for the last couple of reviews, you may have noticed my voice has been out a little bit, and then also for. Uh, for this podcast it's a little bit i i uh you know we the last podcast that we had my puppies were in the uh went to the animal hospital mm -hmm. they're both doing fine wanted to say that um they're both doing a lot better all the chocolate out of them i've eaten all the bloody chocolate yeah we made them puke up with uh the morphine <laughs> and um which i still can't believe they give to dogs and uh the i literally the evening after we recorded the last podcast, I got this weird thing where my left ear and my uh, throat got really sore at the same time. And every time I swallowed, it was like it was a little, sore, yeah. like yank in the throat. Uh, turns out it was an ear infection and strep throat at the same time. Oh, you, you, uh, you crushed it. Yeah. So I went from being worried about my pups to being worried about myself. Uh, I ended up going to the... Um, the urgent care first thing in the morning and getting a shot of Welcome steroids to 2017. in my ass. This is also the first podcast yeah. from 2017. Yeah, it is. So yeah. first recording. It is, well, yeah, because the last one went up uh, day after Christmas. I'm trying to think. I don't know what day. I've lost track of days yeah, of the week at this point. Yeah, it went up. Yeah, because it's only like the third today and yeah. for a recording time yeah. or something. I don't know. Is it no, we had, no, we had one go up like, yesterday. We're yeah. so dumb. Well, yeah, we did. Yeah. I'm just saying. But the first recording. This is the first recording. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Not first podcast. This is so uninteresting. Let's yeah. keep going. Let's keep going. <laughs> so, uh, so you got a shot in your butt. Got a shot in my butt. Uh, got some. That's uh, way more interesting. Yeah. Antibiotics <laughs> and um, and stuff. And basically, I'm feeling a little better. I went back to work yesterday uh, and it was a rough day, but I felt Yeah, okay. you don't normally call out. So when you said you called out, I was like, okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, here and there, but this, this one was like one that there's no way I could have stood that's, in front of humans. That's how I was yeah. on Thursday, Friday. I got something i don't even know what it was at this point because i had a fever and i was just puking like i didn't leave my bed for 48 hours other than to go throw up in the toilet right and it sucked because you hate calling out because it's just that time of year isn't it yeah you know you can't really help it almost like yeah. everyone gets gets under the weather this time of year but just where we work is specifically a cesspool of uh of, mm -hmm. of germs so um but i i couldn't yeah. function like i literally laid in bed i didn't even play video games that's how you know it's bad when you don't play video oh, games. oh yeah i couldn't either yeah so you haven't done you have you watched you watch a lot of netflix what'd i you do, what'd did you do? watch some tv um I, I mean i played a tiny bit of video games but honestly it made me feel dizzy after a while because my equilibrium was all off um i played Watch Dogs, um which i i enjoyed uh i haven't played all the way through that yet but currently still enjoying it the last time i just touched on it when we spoke about it uh but this time i've given it some more time and i really enjoyed it i also played through a couple indie games um i played party hard for a review that we did i played another game that 
the final station, which uh, I somehow managed to botch the recording to, but it's okay because I didn't enjoy it very much anyway. Oh. Final um, station, yeah, it was, it's weird looking. The shooting game. stuff is weird. Like you, like the the actual like narrative and the story and everything are great, but mm-hmm. then you get to a point where you're having to shoot, and there's way more en- like enemies than there are things to hit them with, and you're just like, well, now I'm fucked. Yep. <laughs> no, I'm do now. Literally stuck. Like I couldn't, I couldn't get any further because I didn't have the. Am- which is probably my fault, you know. Obviously, yeah, other people on. have finished that. Resource game. management. Um, and then the only other thing um, was I finished an entire season of a new TV show. This <laughs> um, tends to happen once a week. Yeah. Uh, now this is a show uh, starring Hugh Laurie. Uh, he is a doctor. It's it's called after his last name. Uh, that's right. It is wait chance. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> wait, it's called after his last name. Yeah, like that's the name the of the show. show. Is the name under his? No, like the oh. the show is that. It that was a pun for house. I, yeah, you I see? did. Have I sent house. I, I know who House is. I, right. I've so, watched a couple episodes. I've, I did not watch it. Right. So House was... Dr. House. Where Hugh Laurie, yeah, um, who, uh, played a doctor. He also played uh, Jasper in 101 Dalmatians live action. Just fun fact. I believe you. <laughs> I've never seen it, but yeah. yeah. yeah and then uh, Horace... No, was Jasper the fat? I can't remember. Whoever the skinny one was Hugh Laurie. And then Horace, who was the fat one, was uh, Arthur Weasley from... Definitely. I don't know what his real name is. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure but either. Arthur Weasley, which yeah. is weird looking back on it. But anyways, you you watched the show with him. Yeah, so it's kind of weird, like I said, because it's a because House was such a huge success, and it was a show about a doctor based after his last name. Hugh Laurie was a doctor with an American accent, even though he's English. This is a show called Chance about a doctor. Uh, he's a neurotherapist, which means all he does is kind of diagnose people, doesn't actually do any of the work. Which so, is so he's being typecasted. Well, I don't know if he's being typecast because here's the thing about this show is you'd be forgiven for thinking that it's going to be like a ripoff, right? Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, all those things I just said. But uh, at the same time, it actually turns out to be really, really good. So it also has uh, Ethan Suple. Do you know who Ethan Suple I, is? When you can say names. I have no idea who they are. Ethan, you would know. He's one of those guys that you'd know him if you looked at him. Um, That's you, what you think. Did you ever see uh, My Name is Earl? Yes. You remember his fat friend? Yes. That's Ethan Suple. Cool. So there you go. <laughs> so he is, um, he's in it, but he plays this kind of psycho, like knows martial arts, can kill you with a tomahawk at distance type guy. And um, basically it's about this kind of weird friendship that develops between those two characters, this doctor and this psycho. Um, and uh, they sort of end up plotting a weird assassination together. But it's uh, it's really, really good. And we it, it, watch vastly different TV. I know. <laughs> it's, it, if you've ever seen in, uh, you've seen a Marvel uh, Netflix show yet, like Daredevil or anything nope. like that. Nope, because I got Marveled out. So, okay. uh, as I've said sure before, Marvel Th- fan. Thor, yeah, well, Thor 2, once Thor 2 came, it was one of those things where, like, it just felt like it was constantly there's something, which is, if you're a fan of it, different, it's though. fine. These are really oh, I know, I know, but, well different. but to me, it was another Marvel thing coming out, and, like, I need to step away from this okay. franchise for a hot second and come back to it. So, they're on my list to watch. Right. I have, like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I started, and I was like, I can't. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was shit. Yeah. Um, but the Marvel, specifically the Marvel Netflix ones, so... Daredevil, Daredevil seasons one uh, and two, Jessica Jones yeah. and Luke Cage, and then and so I've, I've heard I've heard they're fantastic. I just right. literally I just need to step step. So away the reason from why they're fantastic is because they're so dark. Like they actually tell the darker stories Wait, of the they, darker. They don't, turn, they don't turn the lights on. Not at all. Okay. Um. Everyone's blind. <laughs> well, they aren't. <laughs> well, I was uh, say Daredevil but, is blind. But uh, but that show, that Chance show, it's a Hulu exclusive and it plays out exactly like one of those. So it's kind of this weird like detective noir thing that has tons of violence in it. Um, and the storyline is just kind of cool. And, you know, Ethan Suplay's character is almost a bit of a, uh, a superhero in, in kind of his abilities and things like that. So um, I would say if you like any of the Marvel uh, Netflix universe stuff, and or Dr. House, <laughs> then um, or give, Hugh give General, chance a chance. Or uh, Horace or Jasper or whatever he was in uh, yeah. 101 Dalmatians. Or 101 Dalmatians, <laughs> unless you're that had, uh, Glenn, that had Glenn Close as Cruella de, Cruella de Vil. Mm. Yeah. If she doesn't scare you, no evil thing will. Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, what about you? Uh, as I said, I've been sick, so I haven't played a whole lot of video games, but Division Survival came out. I've been playing that. Uh, fun fact, uh, the live stream me and Cody did was we live streamed it and we beat it on the stream. That's the first time I beat Survival was on the live stream. I have not beat it since. It's one of those game modes that is really challenging to complete, but it doesn't, it's not impossible to get to that point. Like you always get to the end. You always just get 
raped if you're not prepared, but it also rewards you for being prepared. So like when, the, when we beat it, I think we partially got lucky, but partially we worked well together, which I've learned that two people is kind of the best case scenario. Cause yet the way it works is not everybody gets to pick up everything in that, in that mode. It's per person or per group. So if you have three people, you're sharing among three people. You have two people you are like, oh, I need medicine, which medicine stops. Basically, you have two, an hour to get rid of, to extract out of the infected area before the infection kills you. So you can get medical help. So like medicine stops the infection, painkiller slows it down. So it'd be like, hey, I've got 45 minutes. I just picked up a medicine. Do you need it? Yes, I've, I'm at 30 minutes and I'm counting down. So stuff like that. So it works really well when you get a third person in there. It's a little trickier because just another person to manage so inventory management gets worse the more players you have not worse it's just it's harder. just harder yeah. i mean it's possible but, uh, but is it easier to to stay alive with more yes than, right? especially if you run into the gold so, so you're stripped of balance then. yeah you start you start with nothing like you can make a hat and that's it and this is the first time that clothing made like i guess an effect in the game because before it's all appearance now it has a like heat rating, so it's freezing. So the more the better your clothes you make, the more likely you're not going to freeze. Right. So you got to run from fire to barrel to fire barrel. But again, you start outside the dark zone. You have to craft a filter to get into the dark zone. Then you extract from the dark zone. We played in PVE. I don't think we'll ever play PVP in that mode because that would suck balls. I just can't. I don't. I don't like PVP unless it's cooperative or if it's like a team death match where you are, the goal is to shoot the other people. Right. Um, not this open world. You're doing your own thing. And then someone comes and murders you GTA style. Um, so we were doing PVE and we got lucky because if agents go unconscious or die, they will hang around for a little bit and you pick up their stuff. So like if somebody goes unconscious, you can kill them at that point, but you versus like PVP, you can actually just shoot and kill them. So we got lucky and picked up like four or five different agent stuff. So we got a bunch of medicine, a bunch of stuff to craft and we got in the dark zone and we had no no idea what we were doing. It was the first time we made it that far. We got to the extraction point, shot the flare off as you do in the dark zone, and then hunters come in and they disrupt your skills so you can't use your skills unless you put them down right away. But me and Cody, I, again, I think we just got stupid lucky because we had two hunters come, we killed them, that was it. Then we sat there for a minute. Versus right. the, every other time we've done it, it's been three, four, five hunters that have shown up. And I don't know if that's because somebody tried to extract before us because we were the first one to extract during that session. Maybe they glitched against a wall or something. And Maybe. I mean, I'm not complaining. Yeah. Because I finished the mode and I got 11 loot boxes out of it, which is insane. Um, but it's a really fun mode because it kind of, it, it takes it back to the basics of what that game is. So I was joking with Cody because we played a little bit last night was him and Ian were playing. So before I was waiting for them to finish so I could join up with them. But I was doing the uh, daily missions and my character, as you know, I've put days into him and he's super overpowered and super high level but i've been playing survival so much that i forget how strong my character is then i go back and play with him you're like i'm fucking like the terminator i can take bullets like nobody's business then you go into survival and you're like i'm shit so like in survival you have to take cover you have to be mindful you can die of hunger and thirst if you get too thirsty your vision goes away do you do you think that the prime game would be made more interesting by having elements of things like managing hunger and thirst. I don't think so like because I think it'd be too much, too hard. Yes, um, as a, in general, I like it as a game mode. I would not like it as the game itself. The reason so being, it was a fun choice for DLC. Yes, it was. I was. It was funny because I was very cautiously optimistic because Underground I loved. It was exactly what I wanted. But when they started saying, "Hey, you're gonna die. You start with nothing. Like you have your, you're your character, but you have nothing." And to me, I was like, well, I, I put all these days into building this character and you tell me I get all that taken away. But it is, they do it, they take the game basically and accelerate it in an hour to where instead of over a course of three days, you go from green to blue to purple to gold. In an hour, you go from green to blue to purple to gold. Uh, gold is kind of hard still. So do you, once you choose to do that DLC, uh, is that your character gets wiped essentially? No. Okay. It's only in that mode. So it's okay. instance that mode. Then you go back out. Gotcha. Anything you loot from there comes back to your character. Okay. But you just, they basically strip you of all your stuff while you're in there. And while even you're doing that game. Yep. Okay. And what's really cool. And I, I kind of like this mechanic quite a bit is like skills in that game uh, are a big part of it. We've learned that support station and turret and pulse are your three because it's a blizzard. So you can't see turret holds people back and support station. Obviously if you die, um, each safe house has a, you have to collect certain pieces. You have to collect a certain amount of fabric, a certain amount of weapon parts, all that kind of stuff to, to build it. But each safe house has their own different one. So you can go to a safe house. You might have all the materials, but that safe house does not allow you to build it. So you got to go find another one 
if you want to build that one. Right. So you tend to go you tend to go back to the same safe house if you're like I knew this one allowed me to build the support station. Right, that right. one didn't. So it's it's a lot of fun. I've been putting a little bit into that. And then TV wise, um, I last night I started watching. It's called the eighties. It's a CNN thing uh i watched the 60s and 70s now you know, i'm in the 80s really weird is that i started watching that as well last night yeah yeah exactly. what'd you make it show. through i made it through the first two episodes me too all the TV stuff. and then this then this morning i made it through the the reagan i didn't get to that yet that's, 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 the, that's the one i watched, I watched this the 60s and 70s ones and i really liked they're really them. good and then uh I, I finished we watched um sherlock last night the first episode mm-hmm. of the new season and then i was like looking for just scanning around netflix and, I saw the and 80s. it popped I was up like oh cool and then watch the first episode. so for me what's really what's really interesting is obviously i was not alive in the 80s like i don't know much about the 80s at all I was yes <laughs> but other other than like what you see on tv what i know like some of the like obviously the the first two episodes are t- around tv and kind of like what changed with television and somebody who is big into film and all that kind of stuff is like some of these shows i'd never heard of but apparently were big landmark things mm-hmm. in the industry and i was like oh that's so cool i, I had no idea mm-hmm. or how snl almost didn't stay like, and look at it now. Is it like, weird seeing David Letterman when he was younger? Yes. Well, <laughs> I mean, I've seen videos of him before, but yes. Uh, <coughs> it was... to see him end his career, but not begin yes. it, which was, uh, yes. was a whole thing. So I, I highly recommend that to anybody. Those series are really well done. Yeah, they are really well done. They're CNN, like, mini, I guess, mini series. I don't really what to call them. Episodes, usually something like that. Yeah. So, I, like I said, I did the television one and then the Reagan one, which, to be completely fair, I don't know much <laughs> about... Uh, about politics in general, but I don't know much about Ronald Reagan. I just know kind of what you're taught in school of like Reaganomics and they kind of go a little bit more in depth than like yeah. what that meant. Obviously some of it might be skewed based on who's telling the story, but when it comes to Reagan, there's not a lot to misconstrue. Yeah, um, he was a, he, apparently he was a very determined man. He was an actor that became president. Yes. And that's, and I haven't even seen this episode. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> and yes. um, there's a lot of, I mean, what they basically consider that to be is that they hired someone that they knew could take orders that was a puppet. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot more powerful and smart people than Reagan that were basically pushing his buttons. And um, that's kind of where the bulk of people's discontent comes from with Reagan. But that's why he's also a conservative hero, because he pushed through a lot of these kind of things that were at the time, you know, like the Republicans. He's also a great speaker. I mean, that's one of the that's I, I think it's interesting if you look at any world leader for the most part. Uh, they're all great public speakers. Mm-hmm. They have to be because um, there's nothing worse than charisma will take you along. Yeah, there's nothing worse than having a public leader that doesn't know what they're talking about. Like they're at the end. So I'm gonna spoil a little bit for you, but they talk about the uh, his second term election mm. and how there was one uh, uh, debate he had where he looked like he was trying to basically read off cue cards and all that kind of stuff, and he was stumbling over his word because it wasn't him. It was him trying to say. I guess stuff that they're telling him to say mm. and he stumbled and it looked like, look, he's going to lose the election because he's get, it's, he's getting old. He's forgetting stuff. And the second, the second debate they had, they're like, look, just do your thing. And he shot out, shine the guy. And the, the line was, again, I've never heard any of this, but the line was, uh, I will not let, not let my opponent's youth and ex- inexperience become a, an important part of this debate. Mm. And it's because they're ta- attacking him for being old. And the crowd just lost. And at that point, it kind of just switched the, the way the debate went. Yeah. So it's kind of stuff like that. Like, I love politics, even though I don't follow them that closely. I just love, I guess, history more than anything. Kind of seeing yeah. how we got to where we are today. History is I always think. a fascinating subject. Especially documentaries. We are doomed to repeat it, obviously. Oh, but yeah. um, I've also been watching a lot of ocean documentaries when I was sick. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. There's nice a lot relaxing. of ocean documentaries. Yeah. And polar bears. Uh, what's the one I watched? Blue Planets was my Yeah, favorite. I watched that. Mm-hmm. I've been watching a lot of BBC mm-hmm. because they add a lot of BBC stuff. Yeah. Uh, David, what's his name? David Ot- Attenborough. Attenborough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's like 50 things with him mm-hmm. now. And I was like, I'm. Dude has one of the best, just, smoothest yeah. voices. Yes. Man. Well, he, it's perfect because like with a documentary like that, if you fall asleep, you don't care. Right. Like you're, you're, there's some parts you're like, oh, that's interesting. And the other parts you're like, I'm just going to yeah. zone it's, out. It's definitely uh, like uh, I, I might fall asleep at any second show. Yes. It's weird that they, like, because when they did uh, the BBC, because the BBC do a lot of, like, high budget uh, nature mm-hmm. docs. They just finished doing Planet Earth 2, but they have one before called Life. And weirdly, for the American audience, they changed David Attenborough for Oprah to do that. And I even wonder though... That's, I wonder if that's because we identify it because I don't, I don't know who David is, Attenborough I'm oh, pretty geez. sure that people have gotten used to his voice by now yes. even if you didn't know his name yeah I didn't know who he was you but know I knew his voice yeah. guy is you know but he is 96 as well so really it's, oh, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't have guessed he's that 96 um, wow. 
but you know still kicking he has a wonderful voice survived 2016 yeah. so uh, you know hopefully many more years for yeah. Mr. Attenborough but I love I love at Netflix you know how every so often they're like we added something you might like it's usually some sort of documentary yeah. you know uh, you remember that whole thing in uh, last year when they had the, the competition to name the boat in England Bodie McBoatface yes and then they they said that they couldn't do Bodie McBoatface that boat actually named... ended up getting called Sir yep. David Attenborough that I knew I didn't yeah. know who he was Hmm. Again, it's like you said, it's one of those things where I know his voice. I didn't know his name mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. Good so, dude. Good dude. But that's what I've been good doing. Good old Dave. Yeah. Good old Dave. <laughs> you on a first name basis? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone in England. Everybody in England knows. Yeah. It's He's like, so. My neighbor, basically. I was going to say, well, is he like, I don't see English royalty, but is he, from a celebrity standpoint, like, is he, he like. He literally is uh, a sir. Yes. He was knighted by the Yes, king. but he's he's like. I'm trying to think of celebrity similar in the U.S. where you like you put him up on such a big pedestal, um, he, or is he just like an everyday man that just has a really cool job? No, he's he's like he's not a definitely like in the league of his. He's he's what I would consider a national treasure. Would he be similar to like Elton John? Uh, yeah. From like a esteem wise, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Versus like because yeah. to me, Elton John doesn't seem like he's untouchable, but he also is very highly regarded. There's a lot sense? of people like, that, like Kanye which are West. mostly the knighted people that, you know, you have Elton John, Sir Paul McCartney, mm-hmm. you have, you know, um, Sir David Attenborough. Anyone that made it far enough to get mm-hmm. Sir'd uh, is probably a Can we get treasure. Sir Kanye West? No. no okay, Kanye good. could suck a dick. That's not ever going to happen, ever. I, would not I don't think they've ever... ever I might be wrong on this because I'm not that good at history, but I don't think they've ever made a sir or knighted someone that wasn't under the Queen's rule. They may have done it to like Australians and stuff, mm-hmm. but they're still technically they were they were colonies. Yeah. Well, technically, well, well, I guess Canadians. at this point we're not. Yeah, we're not yeah. technically Americans or not because we fought you in the U. Yeah, that was that whole <laughs> there's a know, whole revolutionary thing. war thing. Yeah, that happened. versus Canada's like we we're yeah. gonna have our independence, but we're still gonna worship the Queen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I remember and going to school and having, the, having, having the queen up there. The figurehead. And head. look where they are now. And look where we are now. <laughs> They're uh, well, in you. the cold tundra. Yeah. So. That's true. But. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah. So watch watch that. Anything really. Would there say. Dur save it Attenborough? Yeah. <laughs> Sir David Attenborough. Uh, Honestly. Worth the, sh- worth if you like documentaries. Uh, Netflix. That's pretty much all I watch BBC on there. is your, st- your uh, gold standard. BBC. Uh. You don't probably don't watch much CBC, which is Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. They yeah. do they do quite a few, but BBC is known for it and Nat Geo in America. We is. have a massive budget for that type of thing, which um, is good because it. I mean, it's the the one thing I like about them, and this is a, bit, a little bit of a tangent, is it's you have to go to every documentary with the sense of it is some sort of one sided at some point, some way, shape, or form based on who wrote the script for it. But at the same time, I feel like here are facts like the the one thing that got me that struck me the most about the bbc ones versus american ones like nat geo is the amount of violence they showed with animals like in america you like you talk about it but they'll cut away and show something else but like there was a bear fight and the bear got fucking his face ripped off essentially mm-hmm. and i was like whoa like i didn't expect that yeah it's they uh, blood? like oh, well that's just english tv versus american tv in general which is yeah. so weird because america is such a more violent country but they won't show you that on TV Which I think, unless yeah. you're like primetime HBO or whatever. Unless, Whereas unless, in England, yeah. as soon as so we have we have the nine o'clock hour is known as watershed which is basically after Watershed, anything is fair game. So if your kids aren't in bed by nine o'clock, then they can see so, some shit so on TV. Bedtime. We're talking death, boobies. You so know, that's, so that's, it's all going to be like, on That's TV. like here, in, in, it's like Skinamax. Is the, it's, no, well, not Skinamax, but it's, it's, it's like as if but it's, but it's, every show has the same content that you would expect from your HBO yeah. or your Showtime or whatever. Like International Sexy Lady Show on G4. You probably have never watched that, but it's no, but it's a really uh, show. yeah, but that's that's kind of the the hour is basically nine o'clock. Uh, if your kids are too young at that point, then they're going to see some shit. And cool. of course, the later you go, the worse it gets. But yeah. then you know, we're even England is completely prude compared to countries like well, Japan, that's so that's what uh, so international France. sexy lady show. I know it sounds real weird, but what it is essentially is back when G four was a thing, they would show shows. This was late at night, obviously, but they'd show shows that in other countries are like normal, mm-hmm. but to us. You know, here is just what the like it's sexualized 
And as you know, America doesn't deal with sex very well. You would love this. Well. There's this new show in England uh, that came out this year, which I only learned about from watching, because uh, I, I, don't, I don't keep up a lot with my home country, but there's this show, and I don't know the name of it, but I saw it on uh, the Big Fat Quiz of the Year, which is a, a popular mm-hmm. thing in England, where at the end of the year, we have a big quiz about the year. Jimmy Carr hosts, I don't know why. but um, It's like, just, cool, everybody can take a test now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just kind of like a fun comedy. We do panel shows really well. I don't know if you've well, noticed, that's a lot. But, I mean, it's if a panel you look show. at well, also game shows, a lot of the game shows and stuff yeah. come from England, come mm-hmm. over here, and we just tweak it. But we do a lot of like panel shows where we'll have like groups of comedians that are on there together, like QI. Well, like, I mean, that like sort of Whose Line you know? started in Who's England like and came over here. Thing, yeah. I've been watching, I don't know if you've looked at our YouTube history recently, but it's a lot of like call and mockery and Ryan Styles. I miss Whose Line. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's suggested it, and there it just, was a, and just kept going. There was a Ryan Styles thing on Netflix recently as well, I think. Well, well they, maybe it was YouTube actually. Anyway, um, so. Yeah, so they have a lot of panel shows and they have the show and there's this new, uh, ga- I guess, game show in England where you have, it's kind of like Blind Date. Do you remember Blind Date? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, it's like Blind Date except the person that's choosing, like all of the people that they're choosing from are in boxes and then they can ask to see a part of that person. Uh, and then everyone has to show that part. So if they say, I want to see their asses, then do it. Yeah. And literally the clip that they showed, she's like, I want to see them um, pants down from the front. So there's six dudes with their, <laughs> with their Jimmy John's out. And she's just like a going up and inspecting them. And she's just like, oh, I don't so know weird. if I'd be able to take this one. And this is on fucking like normal television. So weird. Home. I know. That's that's like outrageous for me. Yeah. Like I saw that on the big that sounds like of the Jap- year. And I was like, honest, that sounds like a Japanese show. Oh, totally. And I was and I was just like, whoa, we're, this is this is where we're at now. Like, uh, admittedly, you- there's a fair amount of trash TV in this country. But that was there's like one, really fucking there's, gaudy. So you know, do you know who Jodie Sweetin is? I from Full House, she was Stephanie on Full House. You know Full House. <clears throat> I never watched Full House. Oh, well, she's the yeah. middle, the middle child on Full House. Okay. She then did cocaine and some stuff and became an adult and had some issues. Okay. Then the next time I saw her again, I used to watch uh, like G Four Fuse. Uh, Fuse is like my MTV. It was like, do you ever watch? I've you seen know Fuse. Is? Fuse. Yeah. Basically, it's what MTV used to be when Which I was is, growing up. Like music, like harder music. music yeah. yeah. Uh, and music my shows. My MTV. Yes, your MTV. And basically, there's a show on there. This is what I knew was going downhill. It was called Pants Off, Dance Off, where you literally, they would put you in front of a green screen and then have a music video. You choose what video you wanted to play and you would just dance and strip to it. Like, that was the premise of the show. Jody Sweeten hosted the show. Wow. And that's the next time I saw her from Stephanie and Full House to Jody Sweeten. I was like, this is weird. That's worst places to be in life, I suppose. Yeah. The best, the best was they'd always get to like, I mean, they'd take their bra off and they'd just be a bar like, and done. Yeah. Like, we can't show this. That would be the part that we would keep in. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was, that, that, that was just a... They used to have this show back home, and we're going on a tangent here, but it's, it's we like always a podcast, do. we do whatever we want. So. I feel like there's never been a co- podcast where you haven't gone on a tangent Yeah, that's, that's the fun of podcasts. So there was a show back home, and it was uh, a lot of young, not younger, older British like- listeners will remember it, and maybe some folks that were a bit more cultural from this country. Um, there was a show called Euro Trash. Um, you familiar? Nope. I was thinking Euro Trip. No, that was a that was a movie. That was a movie. Uh, was the, a yeah, Euro Trash is way way up before your time. But essentially, the host I think it's like Antoine de something, and then they had uh, Jean Paul Gaultier, who was the like fashion designer, would be mm-hmm. like a co host that would show up occasionally. Do you remember Lola Ferrari? No. So, so she was this blonde lady that got famous by basically imitating Pamela Anderson but having her boobs done about 10 times bigger than Pamela Anderson and she ended up obviously in porn you know where else would she go uh, she, her her boobs blew up on a plane and it killed her that's oh. why I thought you might know a lot of is Ferrari that, but, is um, that why that could be that could be from the uh, Mythbusters probably that's where that myth came from so they because hmm. they, they tested a myth of can implants explode on an airplane yes I bet you that's where they came from is the answer <laughs> I, yeah. I had no idea she died yeah. um but yeah, so she would be on there as well. But what they would do is they'd essentially go, because it was Euro trash, they wouldn't do a whole lot of stuff in England. But mostly they would, I mean, they did. But they would mostly go to like these weird little towns mm-hmm. in Germany or France or whatever that had these kind of quirks. Like there was one town that was like a nudist town instead mm-hmm. of a nudist beach. And then they would do like a, an episode on that or like um, weird like swinger clubs or whatever. So it was basically just like sexual fetish mm-hmm. stuff. Everything had like a little bit of naughtiness to it, um, and that's the type of stuff that, like, growing up in England, was the most common type of like sexy type yeah. stuff you would get. It's like kind of titillating, but at the same time, kind of still it's, tacky and gross. Yeah, it's you it's know? 
it's not to the point where it's porn, but it's. Have you seen Page Three? Do you no. know what that is? No. My wife is quite shocked by Page Three when she came over. So, so we have several daily newspapers, same mm-hmm. as USA Today, etc. Um, one of them is called The Sun, and The Sun used to have uh, every day on Page Three just a topless lady. Oh. It's like Playboy. It was yeah, it was like a weird cultural tradition that I never questioned uh, <laughs> growing up. Well, that's 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 the weird yeah. part is like, I mean, I know growing up in the states, I do things without thinking or I have tendencies without thinking about. Like, we've talked about it in that one podcast where we got real deep. Was like for me, I always grew up with college sports because that's just a thing we did here, and you're mm-hmm. like, that's not a thing anywhere else. Yeah, it's just here, and it's. I was like, yeah, but it's a thing. Like to me, that's always it. I didn't think about it even even when I lived in Canada. Like you'd still watch, ooh, you'd still watch. Uh, college football because it's i mean you're just north right. you watch the nfl you'd still watch i mean you watch the cfl as well but it was always a thing versus yeah. like overseas obviously soccer's or football yeah and they would the never thing. like you, they have like under 21 teams and yeah. stuff but no one gives a monkey's fuck about watching them yeah. you know it's like it's a whole different thing i guess it's just like if you live it then you don't think about it and it's not until you get outside of your comfort zone and you maybe That's visit like a, a different country or whatever that you would you would even realize some of the quirks one of my one of my goals once i pay off all my debt which is a few years away. But one of my goals is to take a massive trip and visit all the people I've met on YouTube in their home country. So That'd that in- be cool. That includes people. I know people in France, I'm England. Not going to Australia. Australia. Mm-mm. Amsterdam. Will that make you go? Sorry, Kat. Not going to Australia. <laughs> uh, where else? I mean, there's a few other ones there, but those are the, those are the big ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ireland would be a fun one, too. You're going to find Jack guy. I would love to find Jack. <laughs> he lives apparently. He lives in a cabin in the, or he used to live in a cabin in the woods, like middle of nowhere. Yeah. So he did. He did a vlog years ago of him with his house, and it literally he lived in a log house. Wow. Like that was it. And he since moved out, and he doesn't. He hasn't shot the outside of his house because obvious reasons. Yeah. Privacy. But yeah. Mm. He uh, he literally lived in a log cabin. I love Jack Stepp, guys. You know. He's, he's loud I do. Irish man. So but, yeah. Anyways, let's get on to the. B- 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 bonus question. Did I do it right? <laughs> I can't remember if we would do question or round. B- 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 bonus something. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. B- 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 bonus. Bonus thing. The thing yeah. we do in the middle. That's the thing we do in the middle um, of the podcast here. Yeah. So basically, um, I got inspired. Uh, you with sent this me a text. Question. I did. I I spend a lot of time on um, R slash PSVR. For those mm-hmm. of you that aren't familiar with that's that Reddit. refrain, that is Reddit. Um, and specifically and Reddit's subreddit on PSVR. Reddit scares uh, me, but that PSVR subreddit, I will, I'll lurk. I lurk in there a lot. Reddit is I don't one type. of those things where, like, as a whole, it's far more interesting than your Facebooks and things like that. Yes, it is a cesspit of evil human people, but that is the same as any popular website um but the psvr subreddit uh is kind of neat because the psvr when it originally came out priced a lot of people out of purchase which meant that for a while up until christmas Mm -hmm. um that subreddit stayed relatively like older sort of classier uh gentlemen that were just discussing you know new technology and and talking about what games are good what are that's yeah one of the first things i saw in there is kind of like what game what's the top three games i should get when i get a psvr and i was right. like oh this is a cool discussion yeah and it's not a case of just you know like oh this game sucks this is yeah the worst. it was like Graphics this, is, this, shit. Is, this like, is why fuck your mom you know it, <laughs> it wasn't any of that stuff yeah, it, was, it was it was like mature discussion which is great like the tracking on but, this game is bad but it right, wasn't a bad game exactly so if and it was like it hey maybe it. if you tweak this then that'll yeah. be you know and it was and it's still like that like i don't want to say that after christmas it got worse because actually it's still doing okay there you could see the, the fluctuation of, of young yeah. people there but it's still like not too terrible the really cool thing about it is the devs visit quite a lot mm-hmm. so like the developers that are in this kind of early stage of you know game creation for the psvr will go to that subreddit specifically because that's a really good place for discussion mm-hmm. um it's essentially like having your own beta forum and they will listen to people they will post like the surgeon simulator guys within a day of that game being released and that yeah, website unanimous, nice. unanimously just saying this is this is unplayable right now they would never have known that if they didn't go and visit that website and read those comments so they said you know is there a way to track like can they get notifications on reddit like you uh, unless, unless, unless unless you post to like you could specifically yeah do and, I get unless you're like, replying to something yeah let's say if i sub- if i subscribe to again i'm new to reddit but if i like if i subscribe to reddit i won't get notifications you can subscribe of anything to there. a thread 
Yes. Um, if you want to, or you, if you create one every, you'll get yeah, something for every but not, response. But not everything that shows up. No. Okay. Um, it just kind of filters through the rest of your yep. feed. Um, That's what I thought. But, you know, if you just stay in there. There's, they didn't post that many new things a day that you would mm-hmm. kind of lose it. So, <clears throat> yeah. anyway. Some of the stuff's still there. Yeah, the devs would come in and they would say, like, hey, um, we fucked you know, up. We fucked up, yeah, and we're going to fix it. And we listen to your suggestions. Which, do you guys have any more suggestions? We talked about on the last podcast of, mm-hmm. like, that's one of the best things you can do. If mm-hmm. if you screw up, Hold kind your of hand just up. say, I'm sorry, we, yeah. we did, like. Are bad. But this is like, this is an unprecedented amount of people that are doing that. Mm-hmm. And even like for people that just post in there, like there's a guy that posted recently in there and said, hey, I really like Headmaster. Headmaster doesn't get enough praise. It's a really well done game. Like mm-hmm. the story is really good. Um, you know, the actual physics are really good. And, you know, the actual devs for the game responded in the thread they were, thank you so much and then mm-hmm. they had a good old conversation and there's this kind of level of um really awesome um community in that particular subreddit so i would say if you're interested in psvr uh or just you know you want to hang out with the devs that uh, and, and give them hints and stuff on how to improve their games our uh slash psvr is a great place to be that being said mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. conversation sort of spawned from there because mm-hmm. um, it came up in a couple different ways the first way it came up was that um, someone posted a picture of a really old light gun game called Mad Dog McCree I do know like, game, the game <laughs> rooms played that game right and it's this ridiculous like old fashioned like western thing it was like a mixture of like live action mm-hmm. and like time cops or whatever it reminded me a little bit like uh, like a really bad arcade game yeah it was like it was early like CDI stuff, yeah. and um, so anyway, they were like, you know, it's interesting how far we've gotten from Mad Dog McCree to like Rush of Blood mm-hmm. or, or something like that. So, and a lot of people that picked up or got PSVR around this time of year, uh, there has been a lot of adults that have joined the fray as well because this was the only time of year they could get it, mm-hmm. and you know, because we've been out of stock for a long time, still kind of are still at this are. point. But a lot of people were commenting on what it feels like mm-hmm. in terms of. Uh, I guess the revolution of playing it. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of people were saying was, this reminds me of the first time that I did blah. So they were just kind of like, you know, the first time I got a NES or the Mm -hmm. first time I played an arcade game or the Mm -hmm. first time that I saw 3D graphics. And it was kind of like, it was like, it was one of those, yeah, one of those like nostalgia moments where it didn't even matter necessarily that the games that were coming out were good or if they were great. You didn't have like almost the luxury Mm -hmm. of giving a shit if they were good or great or not. It was just, you just wanted more of that experience. Well, I told you that, uh, the some there's a third party company that does some stats that PSVR owners own on average five to ten games versus a PS4 owner on average or they purchase five to ten games a month versus PS4 owners on average purchase maybe one to two. Yeah, I I, I never thought I would buy anywhere near the amount. Of, I've bought more you bought way more PSVR than I have. games than I have normal games yeah. for sure, and that's because I, of the I think it's a generational thing, and that's mm-hmm. the question is. Is it a generational thing where the older generation of PSVR fans are seeing this as the renaissance of something like that they remember the, very specifically the mm-hmm. nostalgia of buying everything, of every game being mm-hmm. like hard, or of every you know of like of that kind of feeling of newness and mm-hmm. and not caring, or are the young people spoiled on it, and that's why it's maybe not well, I, sticking the same way. For I them. think it's interesting because like with us. I mean, I'm I'm obviously a few years younger than you, and when we got the VR headset, you were, you didn't do anything with it. You wanted to go in as blind as you could, and you mm-hmm. were just kind. Of, I I would ha- I feel like it's safe <clears> to say you're very ca- it's cautiously called willpower. Yeah, cautiously yeah. optimistic. Well, I need <laughs> I need to figure out how to record and all that kind of stuff. So right. I was doing some stuff behind the scenes, but you're cautiously optimistic. You were, you weren't as much as I was. Like this is fantastic. Let's just say I've been let down before. Yes. So you were you were like very nervous about it but i think as soon as you got the headset you're like holy shit versus me i was so excited leading up to it and now i i don't play it nearly as much and i think that's partially because i'm enjoying it's weird because personally in my life i'm now getting to the point where i'm playing games for, that are not sports so i feel like i'm doing what you did years ago yeah it's almost like you're a couple of years behind yes. um like, which is I, interesting and that's an interesting side note because again like you know you have this to me world shattering uh invention mm-hmm. and it's to me it's like absolutely mind-blowing and i'll play anything on that thing just just for the feeling of doing it and how it feels so different mm-hmm. to the 
30 plus years of normal gaming Mm -hmm. that for you you kind of move past like your casual gaming phase of doing Mm -hmm. sports games and nintendo games and moved into the world of kind of adult uh games which have been around for you know a lot longer than you have Mm -hmm. and it's kind of that's been what's been feeding me i mean don't get me wrong i I still love psvr and i think it's a fantastic system i love putting the headset on when i went for christmas and everybody played like that to me is the coolest thing of seeing I think seeing other people's experiences with it are fantastic. It is a nice feeling. I think the problem I personally have with it right now is just, and again, I want to get like Wolves Within, I want to get Sports Bar VR, but the social aspect of it is not there yet. It's And that's your favorite part of gaming. That's my favorite part of gaming. So that's kind of where I'm running into versus like The Division where you're forced to play with players or Overwatch, you're forced, not forced to, but it's encouraged to play with players. It's a different story. So I think it's really weird because to get to your point, I think it's really fucking amazing that we have this system and I... I do agree that it's similar to like when I got my first, when I got the N64, like I wanted these games. I want to get Tony Hawk. I wanted, I mean, it came with Super Mario Brothers 64, but I wanted Mario Kart. I want all this stuff. Whether these games are good or bad, I didn't care. Bomberman 64. Like I wanted these games. And I mean, you today, we, every Tuesday when we get in here, we look and like has a store update and you're like, I get disappointed when there's not a new PSVR game, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, I'll buy them willy nilly. And I like, it takes a lot for me to not I think the I think the advantage it has right, right now is the price point. I think if they were sixty dollar games it'd be a whole different ball game. That's probably true. Um but they're not sixty dollar experiences yet. I mean I no, mean I agree. That's what know. I'm saying. But some of them are. The the sixty the sixty dollar the one sixty dollar game I bought was Eve and mm-hmm. I don't feel like I've gotten sixty bucks out of it versus I haven't even touch that you have an eve in? i've even touched it. no i played it like once yeah and then, that's how i am and i was like cool, uh, but that's I'm... not because that's not because i haven't wanted to it's just i haven't at the time yeah i mean i play i played rigs the the demo for rigs and i remember l- falling in love with that and then i got that that's you know i had that for christmas it was a present mm-hmm. for me um and i had you know i plan on playing more of that because that i had a blast with as well and that's a sports game but like for me sir sur- um, like surgeon simulator not surgeon simulator uh job simulator is mm-hmm. to me the as of right now if i had to choose a personal favorite vr game it's hands down the best because it's so simple and so much fun just because it's stupid. Right. Like that's versus that's your th- taste. Yeah. Versus I think you are more into the hard, like when walk, when I watched Walker play Eve, like holy shit or watch him play, uh, what's the London heist. Like that was amazing to watch that, but I don't get that. I didn't get the same. I mean, I get the holy shit. This is cool feeling the first few times. And I think partially it's cause I'm jaded cause I've, played enough now that i'm like do you think you ruined it for yourself by playing too much to begin with i think i might have yeah. i mean that first weekend i binged as you know like mm-hmm. i i grabbed everything i could and just played it but i do like putting like i said at christmas it was cool putting the headset back on and just watching other people do it and then doing it myself and i find i have to be in the right mind frame for it and that's more so yes. just because you know it's one of those things that you do have to build a tolerance to Mm-hmm. and even though i'm definitely at the point now where i think i'm pretty comfortable in most games like and and i tell you what sold it for me and it wasn't just like the first time i tried it obviously that sold it to me but at the same time like it, it, there's been all these smaller experiences that i've played and all these things and i've been like you know these are great these are mm-hmm. amazing i really love these there's so much potential but i've never turned around and said like oh yeah this is the one mm-hmm until i played that resident final evil. demo for resident evil so, and then i was just like okay that's it i'm sorry there was uh ign a couple months ago did a podcast beyond on psvr and they mm-hmm. said there's no killer app but that doesn't matter right now there will be one we can almost guarantee there will be one but there's no killer app right now but these small experiences add up to a killer app yeah and i think the the advantage playstation vr has right now versus like we can all agree if some of these games came out in non-vr they would be shit period absolutely but i i think what that has is and I, I've said this many times is the whole new way of playing games. Yeah. I've, I, the immersion I, level is consistently the number one, most sought after yes. experience. Mm-hmm. That's why FPSs became so popular because of the immersion level. Um, you know, obviously that's not to discount things like Mario and stuff, but it's mm-hmm. just saying that like that genre became popular through the idea that you are that person. In that person. Well, do you, do you, you don't follow kind of funny at all, but, Colin Moriarty is one of the guys on there and basically he, me and him think very similarly when it comes to video games and in my opinion video games probably since about the PS1 maybe PS2 on has not changed that much no. it's gotten prettier I mean it looked prettier cool mm-hmm. but the fundamental gameplay itself has not changed and I told you before we started recording I think I keep pointing over here because the PlayStation is right here but I think the PSVR is to me similar I didn't have to do the analog stick jump but I assume it's similar to what that was at mm-hmm. the time where it's like 
holy shit, this is a new input. This is like going to a mouse. This is like all that kind of stuff of like a new way to play. And the graphics, we've talked hours at in length of this, but I don't care about graphics as long as they don't hinder the gameplay. And I think that's where VR comes in is like, you could have a game that's really goofy looking and really shitty block graphics, but if it's a hell of a lot of fun, you get immersed in that world. That's the beautiful thing. You're, du- you're, you're like good. You're essentially playing a game most of the time with the graphical capabilities of a PS2 game, mm-hmm. with the rare exception. But because of the level of immersion and the level of gameplay and the smarts that go into making some of these games, the experiences that they are, and I think that we've had a lot of practice too, because if you look at the the small emerging markets that have happened in gaming over the last couple of years, I mean, mobile gaming has taken mm-hmm. a, a big leap forward. Indie games because of the Indie mobile. games have taken a big leap forward. So definitely there's like, you know, when I can play a game like Firewatch or Oxenfree and put it in my top 10 list for the year, then that's a sign that indie games are, are starting to get that recognition they deserve. But then with VR, because it's a whole new input, and it's mm-hmm. literally, and the other thing about it is... Um, VR had a mythical status mm-hmm. to it. So much and, and it's really hard not to cut you off, but it's it's one of those things where like we show the videos, we try to show the best we can on video, but you cannot understand how not immersed until you are until yeah. you're in it. It's, it's impossible. Which it's, and I would love I would love there to be a way for you to experience that without having to put the headset on, but it is absolutely impossible. We should start a company. We'll, you, we'll go start a building in VR, like come play VR. Yeah. Ten bucks. Yeah. But it is really like probably could do that easily. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean we'd probably get sued by Sony at some point. But um, we could do HTC Vive. It's uh, it's definitely one of those things that you absolutely have to experience to fully comprehend it. And the older you are, I think, the better it is. It's more of so. Again, I think to you, it's more of this thing that's been like you said, a mythical creature for a while. And to me, like VR, as much as it's this awesome new medium to me it's just an, the next step essentially because i didn't yeah. have the attempts i mean the i played some vr in the arcade back in the day but i didn't think much of it because it's just you put Shitty. the giant headset on you yeah. find whatever but to me it's the next step we went from i mean we went from 2d to 3d 3d day or and then you go from standard definition to hd hd to vr like to me that's just a natural progression but it's yeah. a big natural progression but i think there's a lot of that that comes again that comes down to the youth mm-hmm. and comes down to spoiled. the fact that yeah that i, I grew up in a screen with my hand for the most part you grew up with a screen in your hand i did not i grew up without the internet i grew up without nintendo Wait, like the internet wasn't always a thing yeah i know right <laughs> and so and then we grew up watching movies that had virtual reality as people wanted to see it mm-hmm. and as they imagined it to be lawnmower man and shit like that and and then you know uh even like you know the same generation that has been fighting really hard to make like the fucking lace-up boots and hoverboards and mm-hmm. stuff from back to the future is the generation that's paying attention to vr and what i really love especially with the fact that people love to film people in vr right yes. it's just like a super fun it's hobby. awesome because people are i, I fucking mean I, nuts. I took a picture of my mom at right christmas and she hates having her picture taken but she thought it was cool and it's yeah and it's one of those things that you it's such like you remember your experience the first time you tried it, so mm-hmm. you're kind of like, "Ooh, I'm so happy for you that you get to mm-hmm. experience this." But, um, but the older generation, I think, took to it uh, more, uh, especially the really older generation. I, I think partially, you know? kind of, kind of get back to the point of what you're saying. I feel like partially it's because, again, growing up with screens in your hands, like to me, it's like I said, it's more of a natural progression. It's not this big giant leap or this mythical beast that's been hanging around for a while. VR has been a thing for maybe the last when did DK one come out four or five years ago? Right. Like to me, it's like, that's, okay, that's, yeah. Cause, that's I, cause technology, cause my lifetime, I mean, I was born in 1991 for those of you who don't know. So mm-hmm. I'm 25 years old. 82 here. Yeah. So age gap. And it's one of those things where it's just like, I grew up where technology just progressed so quickly that I don't think about it when technology, like it's again, it's, I don't want to put down that it's not really cool when I put it on my head, but I'm also again, kind of jaded to the fact that like, this is just a thing that happens in my life. Yeah. I, I always have had the internet. I, I do remember getting the internet in our basement on that computer down there with the dial up. I do remember that, but that was when I was four, right? like four or five. 
So, so you, you were never really a part of the struggle. Yeah, I never you remember like, it, but you never had or, to like. I never so wait this twenty is, minutes to download a song. Yeah, or like a, a corded telephone. I never had a corded telephone in my house. We were always cordless, like stuff like that. That I'm sure you had plenty of those, and it's just like I had telephones that you had to ring the rotary around really? several times to get to the. Yeah, I mean I know about. So it, if you wanted the number nine, you'd have you to, to like go all ring all the way around yeah. and then let go. Yeah. Well, do you know why it's nine one one for emergencies? Because it's quick to dial. Nine 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 for us, because it was all the way to the end. Oh well, that's that's why they changed <laughs> it. Uh, but no, it's again. I think it's it gets back to like I'm as bad as it is to say I am jaded to it because mm. it just is something that I accept of technology moving forward. I mean, and it it comes back to what we said at the beginning of the show almost, where you know I grew up with the idea that a topless lady on page three in the newspaper was normal. Mm-hmm. Um, if you in the generation that we have now, which are, uh, and again, <laughs> trust me, I'm as fucking liberal as they get, but like, if you, if you see the generation we have now where we're talking about, you know, like gender is a constant thing mm-hmm. on people's lips and, you know, your self identity and, um, you, you know, gentrification of areas and things like that. You have this kind of, by far the, the kids are the most liberal they've ever mm-hmm. been. And, um, for something like that. For them, I imagine, would be be like, what the fuck? Why is there a naked lady in page three of my paper, you know? Yeah. Well, for me, it's it's weird because, like, you you always talk about it that eventually it'll become normal, like, smoking weed. Mm. Eventually, I'm to the the belief that eventually in the United States, every state that will be legal. Mm -hmm. Granted, you start in the more, in our case, the more blue states, the more liberal states Mm -hmm. that do it. But eventually it'll become legal. And I it's just an age thing. It sounds really bad because but once the old people get out, like it's just the way of thinking. And it's not their fault. It's the way they grew up. Mm-hmm. And I think that's it, it all comes down to kind of your background, what you're able to do. Want to like, know where uh, Reefer Madness and all that stuff started? Amsterdam. Reagan. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I no. think it was around that time. Yeah. Well, actually, crack cocaine was more the big yeah. one in Reagan's era. But at the same time, yeah, like that that type of conservatism mm-hmm. was the one that made drugs. Like, let's do a war on drugs, Nixon and all those yeah. fucking idiots. Anyway, then, carry on. Didn't do it. But like, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, I could get into drugs. I, I, I think there's different levels, obviously, yeah. for obvious reasons. But uh, but no, it, it's just one of those things where my brother. I think my brother. My brother's eight and a half years younger than I mean. He was born in 1999. Mm-hmm. He was one of the last kids that was born in the year 99, October 8th, 1999. Um, And he literally has always had some sort of game console or some sort of screen in front of him. Like, I say I grew up with a screen. I had a Nokia phone. But, again, I had a Game Boy. I had, like, I did grow up with a screen, a little bit different looking screen than most people. And then I watch a lot of, like, kids react from the Fine Brothers. And some of the stuff they do, you're just like, oh, my God. Like, Mm -hmm. this is crazy. Because to me, I'm again, I'm not that old, but... They did one on the original game, but they did one on the on the Genesis, and they're like, or the old computer, like, what is this? Mm -hmm. And I was like, God! And it makes you realize how much like the iPhone, the iPad, the Android phone, the touchscreen phones are now becoming a thing. Mm -hmm. Like, buttons on a device is no longer. If you think about how ubiquitous it is now for a human to have a phone. To have a smartphone specifically, because mm-hmm. there's, there's still people that have flip phones, and we're not mad at you, Illinois, mm-hmm. but we're just saying <laughs> that, that was a low blow. Sorry, <laughs> um, but you know, there's there's a point where um, those became ubiquitous with us as human beings. That like even right now at this mm-hmm. podcast table, me and you have our phones here at the ready, just in case. You know, did you watch? Did you watch that video? S- Republican Paul Ryan is reelected Speaker of the House. Great. Cool. So did I you, didn't need to. Did, know that, did anyway. you watch? Uh, my mom tagged me in a fifteen minute video. I can't remember the dude's name that did the talk about this generation and kind of like how I need to show it to you. It's actually quite interesting. Basically, if how this generation is entitled, partially because of how we grew up, because we felt like we needed instant gratification, the trophy award or the participation awards, that kind of stuff. But it also talks about how businesses are not helping us figure out what we need to do so like my parents well my parents are a little too young but somebody a little bit older than my parents they were in the mindset of you went to a you went to a job and you stayed at that company your whole life hmm. my dad is a little bit different because he moved around because he followed the money but it, i'm 25 i don't have any fucking idea what i want to do i would love to make level two full-time and i have this passion but it's 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 interesting you mentioned this stuff and i'll tell you why i really because... need to show you the video no, that's, that's great. I called. would love to watch it. But I will give you a, a very, a very quick called. counterpoint to it. Um, so y- you said that, you know, we're the generation of participation trophies and mm-hmm. things like that. 
who was handing out the participation trophies? Was it us? Were we asking for participation trophies or were we being given them because we were special snowflakes? Yeah, we're all special snowflakes. You should know that by now. You know? So uh, it's kind of like, it's interesting to think about it more of a case of, you know, we, we always get told. I mean, and here's the thing. I have the foot in both generations. So I can look at the millennials and say, okay, obviously these guys are struggling getting in the housing market. Obviously these guys are struggling getting jobs after college. Obviously they're breaking their back you know working four jobs just to get through college as i'm not is. ignoring you by the way i'm trying that's to find fine the name you of can video. do what you gotta do there's a video that to show that you're ignoring me so yeah. and then <laughs> i'm listening i'm just trying to find where sandy tagged me in this and then you have the you know the boomer generation that just they grew up in a a period of time that was unprecedented prosperity the wars were all pretty much out of the way except mm-hmm. for you know maybe korea and things like that which but they grew up in a time where housing was cheap and mm-hmm. jobs were easy to come by and you the pay was ridiculously good and you could su- you know support an entire family off a, a job at a not so you know i found it she, she sent it from delta protection protective services um but basically working with millennials can be a challenge here's why it's tom bill you um on the Inside Quest interviews, Simon, the guy's name is Simon Sinek. Uh, I'm oh, I, yeah, I've seen that guy. It's uh, yeah. it's quite, you probably can't see that, but it's quite interesting. I very, usually when my mom tags me in something, I'm like, oh, what is this? But I actually, I do watch it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was very, very insightful of, again, like, I grew up very privileged. And part of that is because of the family I grew up in. Part of that's because of the generation I grew up in. And part of that's just... You're white. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> That, let's be honest. It, 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 this generation in general, like instant gratification. You know, you know when it comes to YouTube how antsy I get because I'm like, I want this now, and I get it's a long, slow burn. But at the same time, you know, a lot of that's American though as well. Yes, because there's the instant gratification is something me and my wife has I've always discussed as a being a very particularly American trait. Um, because even though there is definitely a sense, I think with the millennials, it's almost a sense of the dreameritis. It's like mm-hmm. you know, I don't understand why I have to be like everyone else. Mm-hmm. If I, I see people of my generation or close to my generation that became massively wealthy entrepreneurs, there's mm-hmm. there's kind of this crazy entrepreneurial spirit in, in the millennial kind of well, community. That's, yeah. Which is, you, you could see it though, because we know people that are millennials that, that are all leaving to work for startups mm-hmm. and they're working for these companies that they think are going to net them, you know, massive amounts of money. And the truth is that, you know, not every startup gets to be a whole the, uh The guy, Simon, basically in here, he starts off with millennials have the dream of making an impact. Whatever mm-hmm. the hell that means, yeah. they want to make an impact. And, and who doesn't? Yeah. But, and, but it, it's, it, it goes on like further on, like, Facebook. That's why social media is such a big. You only put the good things on Facebook. You don't put the shitty time you've mm-hmm. had. Like, I have. I'm not going to say his name. Unless but, you're just posting like obscure song lyrics and yes. like sad pictures. I do, I do that all. I used to do that all the time. I said there was a there was a fucking <laughs> birthday card like a card thing I saw that was like a print an actual like Hallmark mm-hmm. card that said we we saw you've been posting a lot of song lyrics lately. We were worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> like, so so I'm I'm not going to say this guy's name, but there's a guy my sister went to college with, and he now is very high up in a very large company Hmm. and it's one of those things where like he looks very successful i'm sure he has a bunch of shit like baggage that goes along with it but he looks very successful on facebook he's hanging out at the voice he's hanging out like he's i don't again i don't want to give too much away who he is but he he works on these shows and he works for for these large corporations and he has a really cool life but i'm again i'm sure he deals with all the shit we all do like the coffee boy no (laughs) <laughs> I don't want, again. I, I don't want to don't want to give give away because I don't know if he's comfortable with it. No, you're fine. so. But I get what you're saying. But it's it's one of those things where it's like we only show what we want to show online, and mm-hmm. we show we only show the best of ourselves. Yeah, and that makes us feel bad because then you think everybody has their shit together and nobody has their shit together. Nobody has their shit, which together, is great. Is the actual answer. To yes. That. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you, like you said, you don't know what you want to be. I'm fucking 34 now, and I don't know what I want. I know what you want to be. You want to be at this table with me 10 years from now. I, you know, it would be nice if we're making money. It That'd would be. be. Cool. That would be fantastic. But um, I feel like we went on a giant tangent again. <laughs> no, I mean, it is what it is. It's fucking, but, we're, we haven't even hit an hour yet. Yeah. We're doing fine. Um, but yeah, it's it's this kind of, this sense, um, I think for us, because we, we don't have a lot outside of our job. You know, this is it. 
pretty much like you you know you have your hobbies and things i have my hobbies and i'm things, going back to school officially yeah you're you're going back terrifying. to school which is cool it's scary just, for your wallet but, but yeah. cool um but you're I'm kind excited. of focusing this year on being more of an adult right That's yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna put this out there to the public Go for it. um i'm not gonna give details obviously but one of the things i am focusing on is there's two things one paying off the massive amount of debt i have um it's I was a stupid kid that, again, I grew up in a privileged family. I could get pretty much anything I wanted, and I now don't live in... I mean, I my parents support me to a certain extent, but also they make me be an adult Which and say, good. you got to pay your bills. Proud of them. Um, but if I have something... Like, an example, a few years ago, my car had some troubles. I needed to come up with about four grand to fix it. They were able to help me figure out how to do that. So that kind of stuff. Um, which... I love the deck of that because I would have been fucked otherwise. Mm. Uh, but no, this year, I'm, one of my goals, I'm not going to get out of debt this year, but one of my goals is to have a plan to get out of debt. Uh, goal number two is to eat healthier or continue eating healthier. Um, I did the whole 30 at the end of last year for a little bit and cooked more at home. And honestly, it just comes down to just being responsible for who, who I am, what I'm doing. And I'm going to, my apartment is not always the cleanest because I live by myself. Like I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And it just got to the point where, you know, it's bad when you're, when you're there and you're like, I need to clean shit up. But I spent, uh, all yesterday cleaning my apartment and it's such a cool feeling of like, I can see the floor. There's not clothes on the floor. We won't talk about my bedroom. So I'm not going to clean that. That's (laughs) that's next week. But my living room, my kitchen was all clean. I was like, this is a great feeling. Like, why don't I keep doing this? And I'm sure something will get in the way and I'll just start throwing shit around as I normally do. You know, and that, Again, but it's a little, that it's plays a little into the generation like as well, though, because you work your ass off. You don't spend a lot of time at home. And when you're at home, what do you want to do? Relax. Relax. Or edit videos. Well, I don't want it. Well, I do want to edit videos, but it depends on what I'm editing. Again, like you have these 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 commitments and you have like, so I work a lot. You work a lot. We're both full time. Mm-hmm. And um, and I feel like level two sometimes is It's close full-time. to it. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, at least one of our days... We get two days off a week each, and at least one of them we will spend together, and we will do it for five to eight hours of mm-hmm. recording and trying to stay up tempo and happy and kind of you know put this material together. And we we do it for fun. It's we a lot of fun. We don't do it for fucking you know for kudos. We do it because we like doing yeah. it, and we wanted to. We have the ability to do it. I think is the important. We part. had a, we had a good conversation today before we started recording, just kind of looking back on the channel because it's it's been a whole, almost two years now and just mm-hmm. kind of talking about it February, yeah. and uh just talking about like the podcast i think this was this to me was one of the best things we've done because mm-hmm. i enjoy it a lot and i know you enjoyed a lot and like you said before it's more of not that we have a, we couldn't get our voice out before but it's more of we're, we're talking to each other it's a conversation yeah, we're talking to each other and we're talking to you the listener but it also like because we we made a change which mm-hmm. we will we'll share with that with you actually that was one of the things oh we, we f- wanted to totally share. forgot to do that no, no, I I meant to earlier. My head. good job um that's why that's why we were a tag team because i would go. just keep going <clears throat> so we made a pretty significant decision about the uh the channel in, in general this morning while we were having our sort of pre uh get together meeting thing and which is weird because i feel like we we have gotten to the point where we're almost business like with some of our meetings. We're yeah. like, let's talk about stuff, That's which is fine. good. I mean, I mean, it's the end of the year. It's if, organization. if you're not going to talk about, you know, analytics and how to push things forward in the new year, then then what are years for? Yeah. So um, we, we you know, we, we had some discussion and then we decided that, you know, typically the type of a thing we're going to talk about now um, is something we would have made an entire video for. Mm hmm. We would have given it a fancy intro and all that kind of stuff, and it would have been like a you know a heartfelt sort of you know this is what's happening. Blah, blah, I blah. think the last time we did the uh, the last update video we did That's what Jordan left was think. Jordan left, yeah, because yeah. I remember making which that, deserved it. I video. remember making. I wouldn't have yes. liked to have done that on a. Podcast. Oh, I remember making that thumbnail because yeah. it just is big bold letters level two update. Yeah, in red. Um, it's like pay attention to this. <laughs> so yeah, so you know we're an hour into the podcast. If you're still here, then get ready for an update that'll keep things fresh for the yeah. next few minutes or so. Um, so what we've decided to do is we we, we take a, a good look at our analytics because we are obviously a smaller channel. Mm-hmm. We have been gaining a nice little touch of momentum lately. I keep seeing uh, so and so has subscribed show up in which my is email list. This is real weird, while. but again, we don't we don't do it for the numbers. But when you get that of like it's people nice. are enjoying it, you're like yeah. eh, like. We put so much effort into this, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I want—I don't want to say that as like a pity thing of like subscribe to us because you put effort in. Everyone puts effort in YouTube channels, Absolutely. but it's the okay, we're doing something right. Yeah, feeling I it's guess the, it's the feeling of knowing that the time 
that we put into this is making other people happy. Yes. That's the feeling that I get. And it's like if you like us enough to press the subscribe button or to just listen, you know, or watch or whatever it is that you want to do, then fucking Thank you. How, <laughs> how grateful are we yeah. you know, that we have the privilege of doing that. So back to the point. Yes. Um, so we went over some of our sort of our analytics and stuff and we were surprised um, at what we saw because obviously one of the bigger changes that we did recently is we, we redid our entire, at Halloween, we redid mm-hmm. our entire look of the show. Uh, we had a very strict kind of five day show type basis and then we have our streams um, that are, are going to be changing a little bit as well. I guess we can talk about that a little bit as well. Um, but one of the things that we decided to tweak was at the end of the year, we looked through our analytics and oh serious to us. everything I'm saying right now. <laughs> That, that was awesome. I was like, what's hey, going Siri. on in there? Um, <laughs> and, um, it literally was a giant paragraph. Which is, yeah, she's, she's just notating for me. It's, it's Apple listening so, to you. Um, so basically, um, we, we went through and we discovered that weirdly, uh, even though we did two full complete Two ones, full ones. We did two full complete Let's Plays. Cthulhu and Finding Nemo. Full of Cthulhu with Jordan and Finding Nemo that was just me and Keegan and those two show types were one of our most viewed for the entire yes. channel, the entire year of 2016. Yes. Now, those are multi-part things. And one of the things about those that was hard, it, was, it wasn't hard for us to do them. Yeah. They're super easy to record and edit and everything. Like, they really are. The hardest part is being good at the game. The hardest part is, A, finishing the fucking game. Because that's, you know, no one wants to watch a Let's Play where you don't finish. Yeah. Uh, and, and secondly, maintaining enthusiasm about yes. doing it. Because, you know, after week 10 of recording Cthulhu, we were all waning a little bit. Like, we wanted to see the end at the same time. We were like, I can't wait to be done with this. Yeah. Um, so That's why those episodes get a little bit longer. Right, Hon- exactly. In all honesty, that's kind of what it was. Yeah. We, and, we need to get done. And it's kind of, you know, and we thought that Let's Plays were something that, you know, let's be honest, other channels do mm-hmm. good, uh, mm-hmm. do really well. Um, but also there's a retention factor to a let's play that once you start watching it, if you enjoy it, then you're going to probably want to watch more of it. And the one thing that our channel doesn't really have is much of a retention factor. Because we're um, usually, I mean, podcasts are one, people come back for the podcast. They want to hear what we talk about, mm-hmm. but technically the topic switches from week to week. Yeah. Uh, the reviews on Tuesday could uh, obviously you can't review the same thing twice. Right. Bites are a one-off. one-off. Is it worth it? Uh, VR, VR is a one-off, one and then Friday it's all, all over the damn hoot. place. Yeah, so you know we don't have anything specifically for retention other than the stream, I guess, and mm-hmm. that can still change game-wise. But mm-hmm. you know, at least it's kind of yeah. Like our, a, I, again, I'm gonna give a little pull behind the curtain here. Our number one live stream this year was Elder Scrolls Online, mm-hmm. which doesn't surprise me, but at the same time, it kind of does. Um, Battlefront, I guess Battlefront started last year, so that could be why it wasn't number one, but. It was it was up there, and then GTA Five. People love GTA Five, and now Titanfall Two's gotten some traction. Playing some Overwatch, gotten some traction, and mm-hmm. it's I, I I enjoy live streaming. It's lots of fun. I do as well. Yeah, it's lots of fun. I think, and we we've got to find more. So we're looking at more games to st- live stream. We've been talking about doing Borderlands potentially, yep. doing Dead Island potentially. They are very very fun games to do uh, multiplayer online. That's the problem is getting a game that both of us enjoy. Yeah. and own. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Which is where your Patreon money and everything comes in. Yes. Um, you said Patreon. It's Patreon. Oh, whatever. <laughs> you um, British. So, so here's here's the news. Here's the change. <laughs> Part of this is that uh, as much as I enjoy doing the reviews for you guys, and I know that we've had some some nice praise for those. Um, the reviews are the one part of our channel that even though I recently started doing like more game based ones and less movie based ones, they don't gain a lot of traction. And I don't know if that's because I end up having to like, like a lot of them get blocked in countries. A lot of them I have to put, um, the, the adult block on them and people don't want to have to sign in. And I get that. Um, there's a butt in this one. We got to block it. Yeah. There's a lot. We literally had one where we tried to blur on a butt. There's been butts and boobs and uh, blood and guts Dead and people. yeah, just lots of lots of that kind of. Tom stuff. Tom watches weird shit. Yeah, basically, and that's fine. Um, <laughs> and that's fine. But at, <laughs> but at the same time, we we feel like maybe the reviews uh, would be better off as kind of something we threw up occasionally on a Friday uh, as, you know, a part of one of our Maybe we, anything f- goes. we see something we thoroughly enjoy. Right. Um, or just something that can't make its way into a bite or yeah. what have you. And instead we replace reviews with Let's Plays um, because that seems to be a thing that people yeah, enjoy people, watching. It's, and we were like, again, it's one of those things where when we say we were surprised, I, 
I'm usually the guy digging into the analytics because that's I I enjoy looking at numbers, but it's not like how many people are watching, what is going on here, that kind of. I used to do that, and that you know that I drove myself crazy doing that. But this was more of like, okay, the year's over. Let's reflect and see what went well, what didn't go well. Like any quote unquote good business, I don't want to say this business, but it is would do. And it's like, well, our let's plays we drop this, but this is actually our number one retention mm-hmm. rate series. So we might want to bring it back because of that. And retention is, is a big part of YouTube. What YouTube is doing yes. now, as well as retention and and the ability to to draw people in. So draw people in and keep them in. Yeah. So that's kind of something we've looked at, and we've made the conscious decision to to drop reviews and replace them with let's plays. Um, so that'll be, I guess, a Tuesday show. Is it going to take that's, the? That's, that's the plan, right? That's the plan. Um, so we're going to have podcast Monday, let's play Tuesday. Wednesdays are going to stay bites. Thursdays are going to stay VR. Yeah, and Friday. And it's nothing to say that we can't do, like, I guess, a VR Let's Play as well if yeah. we wanted to. Um, and then Fridays are still going to be anything goes craziness. Um, so you still see some reviews pop up there. If there's something specific you want to see, let us know. But they are the longest videos to edit yes. in the world <laughs> ever. Um, they take me the most amount of time. They almost always come back with a copyright strike mm-hmm. uh i think there's two that we have that don't have a copyright strike against and i think them. it's the first two yeah and uh so that is and again not not that i mean this i i want to point out this is not a numbers driven thing mm-hmm. it's more of i mean it, it is to a certain extent but it also is the effort versus the return it's more so just what people want to see because yeah it's it's you it's, know like i don't i mean it's 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 i offended tom when i told him earlier that his reviews sucked no he didn't say that I his review, i actually like your reviews thank you i've said that they just um, they just it just I, one of the they're things they're just not sticking well, well, I was say, one of the things we we talked about before we started recording was potentially i mean we talked about broadening our scope but maybe we went too broad yeah that's that's the other thing it's it's a really fine line on youtube and mm-hmm. trying to figure out what fits and what doesn't and especially when youtube changes everything every yeah. 20 days it feels like so as a small channel and as a channel that is you know fighting for every view that we get i think it's important to have these discussions and to and to also share them with you so you know our viewpoint on this kind of stuff because mm-hmm. you know we made like a giant ass channel trailer where like reviews were a big part of that and now we're less than a couple months in and we're going okay that's not going to work we're going to replace yeah. it with something else but that is the i hope anyway the sign of a good evolving channel is yes. one that recognizes its strengths and weaknesses and plays to them um and then hopefully the more we play to our strengths the more viewers we gain the more content we get the better it gets and so on and i want so the level two legion to be a fantastic it already is a fantastic community but yeah. i'd love i want like more- it to grow i think our, our friends uh to grotto and uh, blue and those guys need some some, some extra friends. buddies yeah well, so I think, we again it's some, it's, some it's weird folks. we talked about it last week on the podcast of meeting uh good old john and to me yeah, that's i selfishly i'm gonna be real selfish here selfishly i would love to have a lot more a lot more of that of like not again not to build my ego but more of like holy shit i'm having we're having an impact yeah because we i've said it before we literally are sitting in tom's basement we're two guys at a, at a fold-out table with a computer and a mixer and two mics sitting in a basement recording in nine times out of ten you don't see like if someone unless somebody comments you you don't know who's watched your video you can look at analytics and see where they're from yeah but that person gets mixed in all the numbers and you're yeah. like I don't know, like the fact that John came up and was like, "Hey, like to me, that is one of the coolest things that has ever happened." Even meeting to Grotto, it was cool because it was so unexpected, and it and it puts a face to, to to a number, and that that's the coolest part. Is like, again, when you look at YouTube analytics, they're they're numbers, but they are people. Mm-hmm. And when I met James last year at Indie PopCon, obviously that was a little bit more planned, so it wasn't wasn't as whatever, but it was still really cool to meet somebody who watches your content, who enjoys your content. And then with John, that was, like I said, I immediately came to you and was like, hey, guess what happened? Yeah. So it's, and those are the, those I'm very are appreciative the of it. Parts that we, that we live for. It's the, the people like, you know, like Dave, like Blue, like Tegrado, like John, that let us know that they're watching. They let us Josh. know that they're out there. Yeah, Josh. The last good, last good uh, milk pig. Um, and join us on streams and kind of share the content and buy our stupid t-shirts and that kind of stuff like that stuff is the stuff that i still really, think it's like, weird people have stuff with their yeah, faces it is on what it. It is. <laughs> I, I, i'm not complaining i just still think right. it's real weird like from from yeah. a standpoint of like again we're two guys in a basement yeah we're no we're not big by any stretch of the imagination but we have shirts in multiple countries do we think about that yeah there's at least a couple in england not really yeah i, didn't know. I know at least one in england Fair enough. Uh, I actually know... I send one to my dad. I'm going to have a second one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good old Shadazzle Show has one. 
He has one of the vintage ones with me, Jordan, and you. Oh, yeah. That's a yeah. collector's piece. That's what, I, that's what I told him. I was like, don't <laughs> get rid of it. <laughs> Put it on eBay. Yeah. Um, so. But, yeah. So, basically, that's one of the changes. And the other kind of potential change is something that uh, it's not really a change so much as a focus. It's a tweak. It's a focus. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm also tweaking the focus. We're tweaking the focus. <laughs> Um, which is that uh, one of the, one of the things that we used to do a lot was we would live stream. Well, a lot. You would live stream a lot. A lot. And I got the like the problem I ran into. Four days a week. Yeah, the problem I ran into is I'd get burned out. You were get really sick. And it got from doing it. it and it got to the point where like again, it's not one of the things where we're going to schedule it because I felt the, I felt like if I had to keep a schedule, I put a lot of pressure on myself to keep that schedule. But I'm like, I have to get this done. Right. Right. The only scheduled day is still going to stay Sunday. Yeah. Period. I'm that is not, your guaranteed yes. stream day. The rest of the time, if you follow us on Twitter at level two gamers STL or on Facebook, uh, it's level two ga- Facebook dot com slash level two gamers STL or Facebook dot com slash page. I don't know. It's it's somewhere. You'll find it. <laughs> Just type in level type, two. Type in level two gamers. Yeah. You'll find it. Um, I do want to do more streams because I enjoy the interaction. And I'm actually, if you guys joined us, uh, I guess about a week ago, I did an Overwatch. My first Overwatch stream with some overlays I've been working on and. Their version one. I've got some nicer things looking or coming that way, and I've been working on it. But we're we're trying to make them look a little bit more, I guess, professional is mm-hmm. the word. Um, I like the PS4 streaming because it's simple, but also to the point where like, there, there's two things wrong with streaming through a PS4, and you don't know this because you don't you don't ever set them up. But the the there's two things. One is typing it on a PS4 sucks. Um, so a lot of times whenever I start a stream, I'm like, and we're live. Oh, by the way, I got to finish setting the stream up. And there's like a good two minute gap where I'm just uploading shit, copying and pasting on my computer. That's on the other side of the room, getting it done, not in camera, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that sucks. We want to stream through Elgato because I can get that all set up. The only thing I'd have to uh, change at that point would be the uh, thumbnail and uh, put the game in the, the YouTube has a way of replacing put game in. So it tells you what game you're playing. Uh, that'd be it. The other thing is it also gives us the opportunity to dual stream if we wanted to stream to both Twitch and YouTube. So I'm thinking I'm not going to do that yet. That is a plan for 2017 is eventually set up a dual stream at some point just to see how it goes. Um, But as of right now, all of our live streams of video games will be on YouTube. All of our live streamers events will be on Twitch mm-hmm. because YouTube doesn't like us doing those on uh, YouTube really hates us yeah. when it comes to copyright. Uh, so I've been working on that. I've got a couple cables. I ordered, I got a new headset that's actually here somewhere, probably over there. Uh, I have a new headset. I got a new chat cable. Uh, I forgot to buy a second piece to it. So I'm buying that, but I'm, I'm excited to see what this does because it will make streams kind of, we've always been all about production quality. I think to the point where, we pride ourselves in making things look good and uh, as good as we can. For as good as we can. Yes. Yeah. As good as we can. And it's, I think this will help a lot just from a visual standpoint of like, Oh, they not that again, not that there's anything wrong streaming through PS4, but it's very generic. And the PS4 camera is uh, not the greatest no. video quality. So I have a nicer webcam that I can use. And I mean the, the honest to God truth of it all is that we want to separate ourselves yes above the pack and it's and we love the pack don't get me wrong like we are rooting for every single youtuber to get the subscriber base they deserve and to but you you have to differentiate differentiate but yeah you can't just be you can't follow the crowd you gotta be ahead of it you you have to be ahead of it or you have to be doing something that is different exciting unique or your personality has to be stand out or your charisma has to be stand out there has to be something that separates you from the pack and there are so many fucking uh gamers on youtube it's it's the obviously number, it's the number one the, yeah because it's so niche. easy it's yeah. so easy to do which is which is nice but it also at the same time is i was thinking about this last night uh just verbal diarrhea here but i was like as i do i think about our channel a lot and kind of what we're doing and like hot pepper gaming have you ever heard of them no so they so they do let's plays and they do like one off videos and all that kind of stuff, but they eat peppers while they're doing it. Okay. So you watch people in pain while they're playing, and it's a cool concept. Like it's something different. Now mm-hmm. people copy them because it became successful. But like that kind of concept of like the let's play has been around for a while. The streams have been around for a while. How do you like you say? How do you elevate yourself to be that next next level? Welcome to the second level. <laughs> how do you be that next notch up of like we're taking this seriously because the problem I have and I watch a lot of YouTube a lot of YouTube is waiting through the shit to get to the good people and 
that's why, like, when I talk about my friends on YouTube, like, let's talk about Cody from the Dream Saga. Let's talk about Kat. Let's talk about Scott. Let's talk about Amy. Like, I don't, Seth, who does Twitch streaming now, he doesn't do YouTube anymore. But, like, I don't throw these names around willy-nilly. And I can, Tom can attest to this. I'm very picky about who we talk about on here because they have to be a certain quality for me to, quote, unquote, endorse them. Because I'm not just going to endorse some kid who has a real bad mic in his basement going, Arr! It doesn't matter. I want it. That's I not to it. discourage kids that no. are doing that. That's just to say that when we we want to be a store mark of quality, and that means that when we say you should watch this, it's probably because it's good. It's quality. probably because it's good quality. Yeah. And again, everybody started somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. Again, I don't want to, like you said. I don't want to discourage anybody who's starting out and doesn't know what they're doing because we don't know what we're doing half the time. I will help you if you yeah. if you have questions. That's what we're here for. That's why we do editing video yeah. stuff and that kind of. I get stuff. another like, one going up. Hopefully next week is my goal. Cool. Uh, and you find that live stream after, didn't you? I did. Yeah, yeah there was a live stream me editing. I, I found it. Watched that yet. Yeah, I'm it's uh, that. it was real weird because there's a lot of stuff that I was like, oh yeah, I remember doing that. Because I think, I think the other kind of interesting part about our show is that it's almost as much about how to make a YouTube channel as it is about gaming. to us anyway, yeah. as it is about we, gaming. We are constantly learning things. Yeah. And, and I, I did, oh, you know, I'll let you finish. No, I was just gonna say it's, it's kind of cool because it's, it's, it's like you get to see us grow and we are going to keep growing and we're going to keep getting better because honestly, growing we're not both, afraid to both online and as YouTubers and in weight. Oh, I'm not, I'm <laughs> yeah. smaller. but um 15 pounds. but i think you 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 grow with your community and i think our community is going to get larger and i think a part of that is just because we're not afraid to make those tough decisions and mm -hmm. we're not afraid to say okay this is working this isn't working what can we do better how can we take this money and improve things that we're already doing mm -hmm. we already have two trips planned this year um to go to cons uh where we're gonna give you that unique kind of content we've been talking about for a long time involving like cosplayers and interviewing people and like last year you had the pleasure of meeting lord minion and ray uh and bob and, and bob and yeah all that to kind grotto of stuff. and yeah a lot of people a lot of, lot that of was cool a lot folks. of fun and um you know so it's uh it's something that i think is hard to stand apart from the pack we are a small channel we're going to do everything we can to stand apart from the pack mm -hmm. and we appreciate and love everyone for their support so far yeah one of the one of the things that geek etiquette amy uh has she's We've been through a lot. I'm just going to say that um, both personally and YouTube wise. It's, she's one of the few people that like when I ask her a question, when it comes to certain things, she will give me an honest answer and won't just toot my horn or give me the quote unquote YouTube answer of like, this is the best way to do it. She gives, she's like, this is my opinion. This is what I think of what you're asking me. And uh, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of hers when it comes to just, she has a similar qualities to us when it comes to quality, to quality and to certain things. And I'm a, she, she's helped me a lot behind the scenes. Some stuff you don't even, you probably don't even know about. Um, I like it, but I don't know yeah. anything about yeah. it. Yeah. Cause I, I she's mean, I'm English, isn't she? Yes. Good. Uh, <laughs> good. Yeah. I'm, I'm deep in the YouTube community, the gamers of YouTube on, on Facebook, that group I've been deep into. And I actually put a post. The reason I said this is I put a post up last night of kind of saying thank you to them. Um, it started with YouTube gamers. You probably don't remember. Do you remember when I put that Instagram picture up of our setup and we just, we gained like 50 subscribers from a damn picture. Vaguely. Like very, it's one of the very, yeah, it was the, we were like 30 and went up to 80, which right. seems so long ago. Yeah. We're still at like 80. Yeah. <laughs> we got a little better. We got a little more. Yeah. But no, it's, it's, it's one of those things where like it started there and then in blue who, as you guys know, hung out with the 24 hour live stream, um, does a bunch of shit. He made our discord, all that kind of stuff for us. He has modded for us. He showed me that group and kind of got in. And it was just me thanking a bunch of people. And Scott from Shadazzle Show, who is the official collaboration, of the only official collaboration I think we had in 2016 that was not on a live stream. I think I told you when I was like, I'm going to play with Scott. And you're like, cool, do it. That's that's what I like about you is you, you're like, just fucking do it. I don't care. See what happens. I mean, you um, know, I think that the more stuff we do, the better it's going to be for everyone. So yes. if you want to play with other folks that you think are good or that you enjoy and, their presence i'm fine in youtube and we say it again and again and again and again and again and that's true that both for creators and for listeners and mm -hmm. viewers that youtube is a community i we, think that the youtube what like the people that create on youtube are probably the most prolific watchers of youtube as well sometimes they have less time yeah sometimes so it, 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 yes and no they a lot of them start as watchers and become creators right i mean that's what i was i watched shane dawson back in the day i was like i can do that fuck it let's do it um <laughs> and i did it 
So, but no, it's it's one of those things where like, I want to say thank you to everybody who has watched us, talk to us, anything in 2016 and before. Uh, hopefully 2017 will be better. We we use the the term level two legion, and it's kind of it's kind of fun because that was just like we need to name the people that follow us something. I hate I hate using the words fans personally just because I feel weird about it. I, yeah, I agree. subscribers, viewers, whatever the hell you want to call them. I don't think you guys are fans. We're no better than you. We're same level as you. We just record shit and put it on the internet. But uh, I want to thank anybody who's ever watched this, who's ever supported us in any way, shape or form. I put a, you know, I put a post up on Facebook last night and I was just like, I was, I was in a weird mood and I was like, you know what? 2016 has been a weird ass year. It's been a fantastic year. Yeah. It's been a fantastic year. It's been one of the best and worst years of my life. And I would not change it for the world. And I'm happy to say, I'm going to get real sentimental, but I'm happy to say that I sit across from the table from you every week and it's a lot of fun. So it's pretty sweet of you. Do you have anything nice to say? (laughs) <laughs> okay you have to double check yeah um yeah man i mean it's i mean we started this a long long time ago and we always february 5th 2015 about it but 15 15 it's um it's it's one of the constant joys of my life i think it's it's you know no matter what else is going on even though even i drive you up the wall with it sometimes you do and that's <laughs> fine uh you know it's <laughs> I think it's it's nice because, you know, we get two, like I said earlier, we get two days off a week. One of those days we have to spend together and we have to spend it creating content. But um, I when, enjoy it. when you're creating content is literally just sat down chatting the shit about something you both enjoy, playing games that you get to share and, you know, and then sharing that content and those laughs and those good times with other people who then reciprocate by commenting or following or whatever it is that they do. And, you know, we're a presence all over the internet. So it's kind of nice that we can post something on Instagram and get a different group of reactions to what we would get on Facebook, to what we would get on Twitter, to what we would get from a YouTube comment. Um, But, you know, we have right now, as of recording the show, 770 subscribers. I guarantee you less than 10% are actually continually watching the yeah. show. But at the same time, that 10% that's incredible. Is awesome. Yeah, that's incredible that we have that many people that took the time to press the subscribe button and to listen to us and to put up with us. And I think that hopefully the thing that does differentiate us, aside from me being old in English and you being young and American, um, I think I think I've described us as the stoic British and the young child or the something child, like that. something like that. Um, I don't know. I just it's I think what does separate us is our kind of ability to to be so self aware of everything and and almost make it like it is. It's almost like you getting to watch a show become something that they never thought they were able to do. So yes, um, yeah. I've got one more shout out. Okay, go ahead. Let's get a shout out to your wife. Oh, because she'll appreciate it. Because, as you know, I spend a lot of time here, and I feel I feel weird at times because I feel like I'm trespassing. No, no, no. But she's also been really cool with it. I mean, she when we go through analytics, I told you this earlier, but one of the one of the ones that still we get views on is skills not required. We need mm-hmm. to get her back on for one of those. Uh, you point. know, it's funny you mentioned that. I talked to her last night about doing a podcast and she's up for it. She's uh, she's not certain about doing the video cast thing because she just doesn't like being on camera. Yeah. She's camera shy. Yeah. Um, she also, you know, she values her privacy and things like that. Yep, but, she does, she, but she does want to maybe chat. So fire, maybe fire we can chat. do some kind of like an audio only podcast just with her at some yeah. point. Um, but she'll tell you some stories, I'm sure. <laughs> and, um, you know, and like she and yeah, and it would be nice to get it on to record. Maybe we uh, we have the, the second Tomb Raider yeah. game now. Um, so maybe we can have her do some. That was I think that had to be the most that. frustrating series for you to record. It was because like there's, was there's moments where you're like, not gonna come lie, on, I, come on. <laughs> it was it was super annoying in parts, but at the same time, the damn wolf. like it was just so fun to get to experience that yeah. with the woman that I love. So that was kind of that was cool, and I'm glad that people enjoyed that too. And again, that's a case of us experimenting and seeing what sticks. And you know, that was one of the very first series we came up with. Did really well, yeah. And that's why, like, I'm I'm never gonna call it quits on that. That's something we could always bring back at any point yeah. uh, with multiple people. Could be my wife, could be other people. I would teach one of my dogs to play a game or something. But um, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's cool. It's been a fun ride, and we're still going. So we're going strong. Um, 2017 uh, reviews will now be 
Let's plays. Uh, streams will be more regular. Mm-hmm. And uh, hopefully Keegan doesn't kill himself in the process this time. I don't plan on it. I mean, <laughs> the, the the ones during the week might be a little bit shorter. Our Sunday ones usually are about two to three hours. Yeah. Uh, during the, good chunk during the week, they've been about an hour and a half, two hours, just because sanity. Yeah. Um, but it is a lot of fun. I mean, it's... I mean, prime example, uh, was it last night? Ah, last night I was testing the overlays, and it was literally just random stream i didn't i don't think i posted to twitter i might have by just by default without realizing it uh but people showed up i was like oh hi i doesn't i mean i wasn't expecting this but people showed up yeah. i was like oh hey let's let's do so this i'm nice. gonna, i'm testing stuff so it might be a little rocky here but it's cool because people understand that like mm-hmm. when you go in and like i'm testing this out what do you guys think well, that's part of the growing and, the channel thing as well as they get to see those little it's, tweaks it's and real weird as a, stuff as a broadcaster not knowing what the hell's going on like yeah. I, as you know i like being in control when if I don't, you guys could see some of the behind the scenes stuff that we do during like our e3 coverage and stuff it is a shit show <laughs> it is an we make absolute, it look good we make it look as good as we can but it yeah. is an absolute shit show but at the same time you would never tell. Yeah. So it's uh, that's the fucking the Nintendo one was probably the best because right we were sending else. we were sending text back and forth of like how do we end this? How do yeah. we end this? Where does fucking this end? Nintendo with their never fucking ending Nintendo. goddamn conference. But uh, yeah. Anyways, that's I think a good time it's a to call the good good place to call call, call, call the podcast yeah. fucking English. Um, but thank you guys so much for everything. We really do appreciate you, and we are forging on into 2017, and we are super excited for and the future. Beyond. To infinity and beyond. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So if you uh, are watching this on YouTube, thank you. Sorry, we don't look at the camera a whole lot. I forget it's there, to be honest. Um, it's more just so you can see our genuine reactions to things we're saying. Um, now he's going to creep you out by looking at it. I but can't get that close because I would knock a bunch of shit over. It's hard for you to respond, we know, from the audio podcast. So if you find the time in your day to hop onto the YouTube one and just, like, if you did listen, even if you listen to it on the audio, if you can find the YouTube video. Go and to uh, level2gamers.com mm-hmm. and we have a playlist called Vidcasts. Yep. That has every single one that's up there, or if you go to our uploads page or, or just, videos page. And just comment and just say. Or yeah. you can comment straight yeah. on our YouTube channel. Like there's a there's an area for discussion on the YouTube page. Really? Yeah. I, I don't think you that. knew that. Yeah. No. There's a at the top there's it goes home videos, playlist, something, Weird. something. And then about uh discussion is one of those up there. So there you, you can go. you can literally comment on that. So you can do that, or you can just comment in the video and let us know um your thoughts and feelings about the changes we announced today or anything really that we've talked about the VR thing with do you think it's uh you know a, a generational gap of Oh yeah we difference. talked about that today didn't we? Yeah we did. <laughs> um if you've seen the TV show Chance uh I'll chat to you about it happy I your, finished it so I'm good. What's your take on uh David Attenborough? David Attenborough David Attenborough, Attenborough. Yeah. Attenborough. is br- everything is like bruh Bruh. David Attenborough. Bruh. <laughs> that's, that's the easy way to do it. Remember Going full it. circle. But, uh, uh, yeah. So if you want to follow us on Twitter, I'm going to use social media plugs. Uh, okay. Twitter.com slash level2gamersSTL. Uh, Facebook.com slash level2gamersSTL, I believe. Um, and then Patreon, if you want to support us on Patreon. Again, shout out to Weezy, who was the sponsor of this episode. Weezy. Uh, he's a cool, cool, as it's a cool little dude. He's a cool dude. He's an older dude. He's an older dude. He's an older dude. He's a guy that would love VR. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I told him he needs to come over and play sometime. Oh, happily. We need to get him on the show. Yeah, totally. But uh, patreon.com slash level2gamersSTL. And again, we did buy those Phantom Power things with the first round of money we got mm-hmm. from it. Didn't work. Didn't solve the issue. <laughs> we're still, <laughs> trying to, still trying to figure out what that is. We're, we tried. And then yeah. we do have a plan for the for the other stuff coming in. I don't want to announce the X. We're not 100% sure on where it'll go. Hmm. But it'll go towards like we said cons equipment that kind of stuff um we're super excited as tom said we have two cons on the book right now first one for sure i can guarantee wizard world i will be there you should wizard be there st louis st louis yeah wizard world st louis we will be there um and then uh a little fun fact if you're listening to this a week ago uh yesterday tickets for any popcorn went on sale as well as press pass applications we did what we did last year and applied for press passes we're waiting to hear back even if we don't get them, I probably will still go. It's actually a relatively inexpensive con compared to Wizard World. Wizard World is bloody expensive compared to uh, yeah, Wizard Con is probably it's one bigger. of the more popular ones because well, it goes up and down the country. Well, it? also, Indie PopCon is newer. It's in its fourth year. Oh, cool. So it's a, it's a fourth or fifth year. It's relatively young. Um, and I'm going to try and make both of them with Keegan. So yes. um, I will be there. And James is trying to go. And as well. we're trying to get Blue to go. It's going to be a meeting of the It'll minds again. Yeah, trying to get Corky. A lot of people to go. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Cool. Am I missing anything? Nah. 
Instagram.com slash Level2Gamers STL. Instagram's fun. We haven't played that one. I have the most fun with Instagram of I've all noticed. of our things. I, I love when it's like, because I get notifications, obviously, and it's like, somebody liked your photos. Like, what the hell did we post? Oh, I'll post, post a picture of his dog. I'll post like <laughs> vape things. I'll post pictures of my dog. Like any, the, the best was when that, vape, that vape company followed us or something. Yeah. yeah. No, I posted like one picture of the vape setup, and then I, we had like twenty vape <laughs> companies that jumped on. Like this is awesome, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> like what? Instagram is weird. Yeah. It's actually our least. Uh, we have our least base there as well, which is kind of interesting because we get a lot of people there. We do because um, we use those hashtags. Engagement. Those yeah. hashtags. Hashtag those hashtag. hashtags. Those hashtags. But. Yeah. Anyways, that's where you can find us on the internet, the inner worlds, interwebs. Uh, and we do, again, videos Monday through Friday, streams on Sundays. Uh, videos on Monday through Friday are 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time and 9 p.m. on Sundays. Yep. That was a mouthful. I'm getting better at this. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I say things That's why I just say yep. Yep. So we yep. have a bunch of stuff to record. We're going to yes. go and do that now. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, watching, guys. And as always, welcome, welcome to, to the, the second, second level. level. Bye. Bye. Love you guys. Mwah. It ain't no game, but they say welcome to the second level. <laughs>